So believe it or not, but somebody stole our cow. Somebody actually came onto our property and took Mr. Moo Moo. So I thought I'd do a video on this because there are several uh, things with, with the law. Don't you love our laws? They're always so gray and, and don't really mean a whole lot, but then they can really screw things up for you. So I wanted to do a video just talking about a little bit about Mr. Moo Moo in general, and then also what I'm doing to uh, keep it from happening again, to better protect our property and better protect my rights as a property owner. Uh, first of all, in the state of North Carolina, when a, an animal goes missing, livestock, what happens is if it tr goes onto somebody else's property, and Mr. Moo Moo came onto our property, that's how we acquired him in the first place. So he came onto our property, and what, as a property owner, you should do, and what we did was we call the sheriff's department and we say, hey, we have a steer that wandered onto our property and we're reporting it. And so basically you report it to the sheriff's department and the sheriff's department will put up a notice uh, allowing the property owner to claim that steer. Now they do charge an impound fee. They, they charge the property owner who lost the animal for the lost animal. It's about $100 in our state or in our county. And then uh, they also will charge the, the animal owner for boarding at the facility that impounded it. So in Mr. Mumo's case, we were the facility that impounded it. Now after 30 days, what happens is that if the animal is not claimed, it becomes the property of whoever's property is on. So we were the impounding party, the cow became our property. And that's how Mr. Moo Moo remained for a very long time. <laughs> he was here, uh, he loved it here, he, he had a good life. We, we spent money bedding the cow, um, we spent money feeding the cow, we spent money taking care of the cow. We put more weight on that cow than, than I can even think of. Because he was here for a long time, he was here grazing and um, he became a part of the herd, so to speak. When, when you lose an animal and it's impounded, and that's, that's just, you know, basically, by impounding it, we're notifying the sheriff that we have an animal. If, if we don't do that, then nobody will ever know that we have it. So it's not a bad thing, and, and they do have a process to get the animal back. And part of the reason why they charge fees is because they want owners of livestock to take the precautions to make sure that their animals don't get out again. Put up a fence that the cow can't get through, and we won't have a problem. You know, check your fence lines, make sure that there aren't trees falling on them, and we won't have a problem. And that's really what the law is there for. It is there and it's designed to protect the community, to protect uh, other landowners from damage to their property, etc. So I don't have a problem with impounding an animal after 30 days calling it mine because if somebody didn't call into the sheriff department and say, I'm missing a cow, then they obviously don't care. And, and that's what this all comes down to. They, either they don't care or they're not legal in the first place. Mr. Moo Moo had been here for quite some time. You guys have watched the videos. We went to the beach to celebrate my niece's birthday. And when we got back, I didn't see Mr. Moo Moo. And he's almost always with the horses. And so I finally, I went out and I started looking for him. He was gone. Now, one thing that I won't do, I will uh, come over a property line, like I am right now, to make repairs to a fence or to do something, but I don't leave this little stretch on either side of the property line. I don't try and go onto other people's property looking for things. And so I didn't do that in Mr. Moo Moo's case. Mr. Moo Moo was found. He was found in a neighbor's pasture about a week later. Nobody knows how he got there. That neighbor contacted me and said, hey, I've got your cow. Before I could get to it, the neighbor contacted me and said, hey, um, the cow is gone. I'm not sure how he got out but I saw him tied up over at this house down the road. And uh, again, we were out of town. And then he contacted me again and said, hey, I got your gal again. It came back, I've secured it, it's ready for you, you can pick it up when you get home. Next day, called, said, nope, cow's gone. It's back tied up at that house again. And so basically what I think had happened is that um, the people who originally had the cow had seen the cow and come and taking it. And I, and I think that they took it because we always latch our gates. We latch them and then we have a latch that wraps around and clips so that there's no way that the animals can open the gate. And this time 
that uh, chain was just kind of thrown over the gate when we came home from the beach, which means that somebody had unlatched it and opened the gate. There were fresh cow patties outside of the gate and somebody had taken the lid off of our feed, uh, which means somebody had tried to access the feed and uh, just left the lid off on the ground. Which, so somebody was obviously trying to get the cow out of the pasture and did a sloppy job of closing things up. The feed was ruined because they left the lid off and it rained. So that's uh, kind of the story, backstory behind that. And then of course, you know, we now know where the cow is because uh, this other neighbor has seen where it has gone every time he tries to help us retrieve it. And at first my wife and I were very distraught about this, uh, very upset. He was upset. He was upset that somebody came into his pasture and took a cow. Although he couldn't prove that they came into his pasture and took the cow, he couldn't figure out how the cow could have gotten out of his pasture. And he's got an entire herd of cows, so it just seems a little odd that one cow would get out and not the entire herd. We both checked the fence lines on our property and the, prop and the fence lines between them and there's no way that the cow could have gotten out of those. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, you, you can't prove it, but you know it. We were distraught about this. We were bothered. He was bothered by the fact that somebody would feel that they had the right to just walk onto your property and take something back that they felt was theirs. Even though you'd been caring for it for about a half a year, even though you'd been feeding it, paying its vet bills for a half a year, they felt like they had a right to just come and take it back without even asking. And that is something that uh, initially hit me uh, very, very wrong. I, I had a lot of ill feelings towards it. But when my wife and I talked about it, I said to her, you know what? If uh, somebody was that desperate that they felt that they needed to do that, somebody who was that desperate that they didn't want to go through the actual channels, and again, it had been so long that they probably couldn't go through those channels anymore to, to retrieve that cow, then they needed it more than we did, and we should just let it go, you know? dust off the shoulder, let it go. But that also got me into thinking about, and it, if, if for some reason he comes back into our custody, we'll probably go ahead and take it because uh, from what I understand, the situation isn't good and legally, we own the cow. According to the Sheriff's Department, we are the proper owners of that cow. And, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that too, because technically we're liable for the cow even though it's not a our property and it's tied up to a tree somewhere. When it comes to property lines and, and property rights, it brings up a whole other slew of things. Have you ever read the trespass laws in your state? So this is an interesting thing. If you don't have no trespassing posted on your property, or if you live in a purple paint state, and, and purple paint and no trespassing signs don't mean the same thing in some states. In our state, they don't. But if you don't have your property properly marked, then it is presumed that it is okay to enter the property. Um, and we've had things stolen before. We had a four-wheeler stolen before. It broke my heart. I was extremely upset. Um, and I, th I think it was a contractor working on our house. One of the, the crewmen came out on a day off. It disappeared on a day that they were on a day off. And the, and the, the crewman was the one who alerted me to the fact that the four-wheeler was missing in the first place. It breaks my heart when people just come onto your property. It doesn't make sense to me that somebody would feel that they can just walk onto somebody else's property if they're uninvited. But the laws, especially in a lot of states across the US nowadays, they allow that because there is this feeling, this thought process out there that we should all be sharing of our land, all be sharing of our property. And so it is a, it, it is a you're allowed to enter somebody's property if there is not a no trespassing sign up if there's not purple paint, if there aren't signs that say, don't come here, it, you can presume that it's okay to enter. And we, do, we did have no trespassing signs up uh, a while back, they have blown off. Um, I hadn't gone out and put new ones up. We do have a fence around our property. And in some states, the fence means keep out. But uh, again, that's one of those things where it doesn't necessarily mean that trespassing is illegal. It just means that there's something on the other side of the fence that they're trying to keep in there and you probably shouldn't enter. So it's a gray area law. So the fence in and of itself does not keep people, doesn't give people a class two misdemeanor for entering your property. And trespassing signs are often considered a warning. They, they say it's illegal to come here, don't come here, but they'd also, uh, it's weird because 
the purple paint law actually increases the charges if somebody enters the property than the no trespassing sign, but then the no paint law doesn't necessarily mean no trespassing either. This is where it all gets confusing. I don't know if any of you have ever had to deal with court system. I have. There are so many gray areas. I used to be, when I was in business, I used to be one of those people who liked to play the game. But now that I'm not in that world anymore and I don't want to associate myself with it, uh, I don't like the game at all. And I don't like these laws, I don't like all the gray areas because as a property owner, I'm looking at it like, okay, so that guy can enter my property and, and say that he was chasing a wounded doe and go as far as he wants to past my no trespassing signs because I didn't have purple paint up. But if I put purple paint up, now he can't chase chase the doe onto my property, but it depends on which state you're in. And so uh, depending on which state you're in, the law could be different. So if the guy's visiting his aunt and uncle during Thanksgiving and he shoots a deer and it comes onto my property and he follows it onto my property, all of a sudden, you know, he doesn't know the laws because he's out of state. So it, and there are so many ways to get around things. It's ridiculous. Um, if you have video cameras on your property because it's private property, the person could presume that they're not on camera unless you have a sign posted saying that you have security cameras. And so therefore, they presume they have the right to privacy on your property because it's private property and they presume that there's not a security camera. And this is one of the videotaping laws that I, I know very well because we do a lot of videotaping for other people. And a lot of the question comes down to, well, are you allowed to film the people at the event? Are you not allowed to film? What, what age are you allowed to film? You're allowed to film in public settings. You're not allowed to film and record in private settings without the disclosure that you are and without the permission. Now, if somebody comes onto your private property, it's posted that you have cameras, it's posted that there's no trespassing, and then they enter anyway, then you have the right to use that videotape evidence against them. But in some states, some states, they'll actually throw out your videotape evidence from trail cams and everything else if you don't have it posted that you have cameras on your property. So anyway, this is kind of a bit of a rant. And, and again, you know, I like to be neighborly. I like to try and be understanding. And, and in this case, if somebody really needed that cow, um, then they needed it more than I do because I would never do that. Uh, I would never do what they did. And that's what, um, that's what it comes down to. I mean, I don't, I don't want to deprive somebody, but uh, I don't want people feeling like they're allowed to come onto my property. And the other thing, this is another weird law. If you have no trespassing signs up, if you have purple paint up, if you have all of this stuff done to your property and you catch a trespasser and you let them go, if the next guy that comes onto your property says, oh, hey, I heard Robert came onto your property and you didn't prosecute him, so I thought it was okay, then he gets off the hook because you've defined your trespassing law. You have to prosecute everybody that comes on. So now I'm, I'm making a new statement, making it extremely clear on our property that there is no trespassing. I've got purple paint. I've got no trespassing signs. I'm ordering more no trespassing signs because the paint and the signs mean two different things. And I'm also uh, putting up security camera signs because we do have security cameras. We're extending our security footage from not just around the house, but uh, we're getting the wireless cameras installed so that we can see different areas like pastures and stuff. And um, we're putting those signs up as well because if anybody comes onto our property at that point, we're gonna use the evidence against them. And that's the only thing that you can unfortunately do. People don't respect other people's space. They don't respect other people's land because we live in a society that says we should all share. They don't realize that in doing so, they ruin an entire tub of feed. Um, we've, they've, you know, basically taken an investment from us without compensating us for it. They didn't compensate us for vet bills. They didn't compensate us for, you know, feeding the animal. Those are rightful acts that should have been done. Um, and it's just a, it's a sad thing that, you know, that's what it comes down to. I hate going around my property and putting up purple paint. Um, so one of the things about purple paint, and this is an interesting part of the law, North Carolina, uh, it means no hunting. It means no trespassing. It also means that if you're chasing a deer, you're not supposed to enter the property. You've lost it. it, it but it's also a uh, hazard warning. So even if you give somebody permission to hunt on your property, if you have purple paint up, it means beware. And the rights that that person have if they get injured while they're on your property, if, if something happens, they get shot at because there was another hunter on your property, 
because you had purple paint up, they have no more right to sue you than an actual trespasser does. So the purple paint actually protects landowners in more ways than one. It protects them against trespassers. It also protects them against people that they invite onto their property or allow access onto their property. But it, it doesn't necessarily mean no trespassing, no bird watching. Somebody could come onto your property if they're not hunting um, and they're not riding a four wheeler, they're just bird watching or Lord knows they're, you know, coming out on your property in the middle of the night to stare at the stars, you know, then it doesn't cover that. The no trespassing signs do. And so it's important to have both levels of protection. And like I said, the camera signs are necessary depending on the state you live in and what kind of crooked attorney is representing the criminal that just came onto your property. Um, they could argue that they were in a private place and didn't know that they were being filmed and then it would be inadmissible to the court. So the camera signs are equally as important. The other thing is, is and, and for all of this stuff, I would consult an attorney because every state is different, every county is different, every judge is different. Um, I sat in front of a judge who flat out said, I don't have time to read the general statutes of the state of North Carolina. They don't pay me enough, so I'm not going to. This is my opinion. And um, he was a complete, well, let's just put it this way. I changed my voting party after that because I couldn't stand the guy. That's not, you know, I don't care what party you are. If we have to abide by certain laws and you're making me abide by a certain law, then you need to interpret the law on your bench. Politicians are a bunch of baby kissers. In that case, that guy was sticking up for a big, big meat company um, and just royally bending over a local company that had, I thought, done a very fair and honest job. Um, and then I went in front of the judge on another case and the same thing happened. He, he kind of ruled in my favor and then threw the whole thing out on a technicality. Turns out he's friends with the guy that I was in the lawsuit with. Anyway. You can't, the best way to protect yourself is to just cover all the bases. If you don't want people trespassing, cover every single base. Make sure that you have every single warning that's out there. Keepa, come here. Keepa. She's on the wrong side of the fence again. Anyway, those collars, they, they're horrible. They're, they, they, if they, the dog can connect to your phone via Bluetooth, it assumes the dog is safe. It's supposed to tell you when it goes out of the safe zone that it left the safe zone with a particular owner and whatever phone that, that dog is connected to. It just said the dog is at home with an owner and oh, your dog has achieved mileage today. Yeah, it was all the way over on a different farm. Um, anyway, so the, the when it comes to these no trespassing things, it's important to uh, protect yourself as a homeowner. I mean, the, you. You need to protect yourself from liability if you have land anyway. Anybody can come onto your property, hurt themselves, and, and say they, they presume they had the right to be there and sue the heck out of you. I hate putting these markers up. I love our neighbors. And I honestly don't care if our next door neighbor comes walking over, you know, but um, it's the other people that just come on here that bother me and I've got to put a stop to it. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, you know, as far as the cow goes, it's not like we're we're very secretive. We've posted videos saying the cow was here and nobody claimed it. And to come out one day and just decide, oh, it's gotten big and heavy. I'm ready to take that cow back. Thanks for vetting it. Thanks for feeding it. Uh, it'll feed my family for the next year. <clears throat> that is a little more shameful to me. Um, it's, it's wrong because it's taking money from our family that uh, we've invested. It's taking a lot of things away from us that is unfair. But at the same time, like I said, I got to look at that situation and say, well, if they truly are that bad off, who am I to take away their supply? I don't necessarily need it. And I don't, I don't want, you know, a Holstein cow on our property. I, I've, I've been trying to get a herd of bison out here. I'm still working on the fencing for that. And in the meantime, we'd rather raise other breeds of cattle, Brahmin or Angus, not Holsteins. Nothing against, you know, Holsteins, we're just not in the milking industry. So um, the Holstein steer didn't make any sense to us, but that's why he stuck out too, is it was just kind of like one of those random things. Now, it wouldn't have surprised me if he escaped from a, from a milk farm or whatever, but whoever he had, whoever had him, I don't know the people personally, but they they didn't care enough to report him missing when, they, when he went missing many, many, many months ago. So 
you know, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, maybe there's a situation there that I'm unfamiliar with. And so I don't want to be too judgy, but I do want to make sure that it's well known in the future that people don't come on our property without our permission. People don't come onto our property and take things. Um, and that when they do, I'm going to get them on camera. I've, I've always hidden cameras when we leave trail cameras and stuff, but, um, this is something else. This is, you know, to go away for a night. Uh, I didn't do that. And, um, so now we're putting up, now we, we're, we're investing in more, you know, security cameras, wireless cameras for our system to extend the coverage out to areas where I shouldn't have to do that. It shouldn't have to be that way, but it, it is. And I feel bad about it on, on multiple levels. I feel bad for the people who feel like they have to do that. Anyway, if you, if you have an issue, uh, make sure you do it all. The signs, the paint, if you've got cameras, if you're putting trail cameras out, put those signs up, put those, you know, uh, put those signs up so you don't get, you know, hurt on your evidence and uh, make sure that you guys are protected if you have a lot of land because there's not a way, you know, I'm not standing out here every moment of the day searching all over every acre that we have. There are some areas of our property I only look at, you know, once a month, if that, sometimes once every six months, depending on where it is. And so um, it's, it's important to have a system in place. Now, they do make cellular cameras that can extend further than your Wi-Fi. I've got our Wi-Fi extended pretty far for cameras right now, but um, they do make other services that you can operate, you know, cameras off of, you know, like AT&T if they've got service in your area. I'm sure, you know, I would think with, with a $3,000 camera for a field camera that you could get whatever service you wanted, but they do make cameras that you can put out in the middle of nowhere and hopefully get a video recording of what's going on out there. But there's just, you know, we live in, a, in an odd, odd world where, um, people just don't respect each other enough and it's a shame and it makes me just feel horrible that I have to go about it this way. Real quick with the purple paint, uh, this is about the size that your marking should be and um, it needs to be at least, you know, five to eight inches long, three to five inches across and you need it about three to five feet high. Now I I paint, you know, what I can. If you have metal posts, I just paint the whole post. Um, as long as I have a marker about this size, every 100 to 200 yards, I'm good. But you want to get as much of the paint along your property line as you can. You want it to be well marked. That's the main thing. But um, at least have a legalized sizing of the marker every 100 to 200 yards. You might want to check your state to know what your laws are and how, how high the marking should be and the size of it. Um, I made a stencil so it would be easy for me. And whenever I find a big tree on the property line, which is usually about every 100 yards or so, I, I go ahead and put this marking on that tree to make sure that I have the proper legally sized marking um, at the right intervals. But then I'm also painting almost every other post uh, that have the white tips the, the, the met where I have the, the metal posts. I'm painting almost every other one of those purple just to really make it clear that this is a purple paint property. Purple paint laws apply. Um, the no trespassing signs, I'll probably put up as many of those as I possibly can. And again, I'll put them on the property lines. If there's a tree slightly set back uh, from the fence line, I'll put it on that. Um, but it's important that you get as much of it you know, marked as possible and make sure that you get as many legal sized markings as you can because that's where they're going to get you. If you just paint the tips of your posts and you don't have these at the right intervals, uh, that, meaning this size, uh, they'll get you and say, well, it wasn't the proper size marking. He didn't know because people are colorblind. That's important. So make sure you do that if you're going to use the purple paint. And like I said, don't just use purple paint, put the signs up um, and make sure that you've got all your bases covered. They all mean different things. And if you've got all of the markings up, the, the, the charges that you'll be able to file against somebody who does come onto your property are gonna be more severe than if you just had one thing up. There's always a way around each law. The, you know, depending on where you live and what your trespassing laws are, um, it's good to just make sure you cover all the bases.